What's up, guys? It's Nas here, coming at you with a different style of video today. I got my homies, JD, and my homie, Joe. Yo, how you doing? Yo. I got my homie, JD, and Joe in the call with me, and today we're going to be talking about something that I've been meaning to talk about for a little minute, but just because I haven't been exactly the best person, knowledgeable, knowledge-wise, to speak on this, I was going to get them in the call because they give different perspectives, especially my homie JD, because, you know, he's the goat at all fighting games, so, you know, you definitely got to get him in any video when you can. But today, we're talking about Tenkai 4 that mostly everybody knows about by now. It's talking about, um, super excited for, and I just wanted to talk about today how the different what's the word i'm looking for the different in terms of things that we're expecting the difference in some people's feeling towards the games and some of the things about it and just overall like the whole game as a whole so i'm not gonna ramble i'm gonna let my homie jay speak because he is gonna be speaking from a perspective of somebody who was really really good at being like way above average in terms of how most people were playing it and if I remember to, I'll remember to pull up his Twitter video that he just posted where he's showing like, some combos. No, 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 no. Look, I gotta give them the sauce, cause you know they gotta see the, how you really be in the lab and shit. Cause this man is a big um proficient advisor of going into the lab and getting good. So you know you gotta you gotta listen to him when he be speaking, cause he be speaking facts. But uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and let him talk. So go ahead, JD. All right, appreciate you. All right, what's good, y'all? All right, so um, if y'all know me from my um JD channel, um usually I do like gaming movies and like anime videos where i talk about animes in one video oh it's linked in the description by the way yeah well but not right now because you know most of my videos got removed but we ain't gonna talk about that but anyway yeah, that um so take IG. um i am excited for the game for sure um me and Nas, we watched it during the dragon ball what was it, the games hour world finals yeah something like that we were watching the world finals for it where they announced the rollback for dbfc and such um it was a very shocking thing because around that time, nobody even knew that that was going to happen. There was no leaks. It was very surprising. Yeah, because we were literally sitting there watching the World Finals and it was like, it happened during that, like, what was it, three hour break in between yeah, it was like, the last match? It was match. like a three hour break that we were all just waiting and sitting there. But when they said a new Tenkaichi, I was screaming like crazy i'm like whoa whoa <laughs> yeah he hit me up because i wasn't even watching the stream he was he was in a i think siri x uh stream and he was like why is everybody in here talking about uh 10k4 nods and i was like well i know they'd be playing with the mods and shit so maybe they talking about that and then i went on twitter and i'm seeing everybody flip out and i'm like oh no wait no this might actually be like a whole new reveal and yeah, but then, then i went on uh youtube and i saw everybody's reaction to it <laughs> and i was like yeah it's real so as Nal said, um, I've been playing Tenkaichi and the Budokai games for like a lot, very long time. I learned how to like really like get in depth with the games around Budokai 2. And then from then onward, that's when I really got into depth for like every game I started playing around that time. So a new Tenkaichi, why I am very hyped for it. I'm also very optimistic for it too, because number one, we don't know who's developing the game. We don't know if it's Spike Chunsoft, Demps, CC2, we have no idea. So we don't even know what the gameplay or the story is going to be like at all. 
but yeah, we haven't even for seen me mostly um mm -hmm. mostly things i want to see for the game i still want to have like mechanics that i really like in the tenkaichi series like i love things like having to dash cancel i love having the descend combo canceling or how having the heavy smash combo canceling i still want that stuff in the game but again that's if the gameplay for tenkaichi is still the same because we could never know they can play like Raging Blast, even though for some reason they want people to forget about Raging Blast even though, and Ultimate Tenkaichi altogether. But I can understand Ultimate Tenkaichi, but I'm a yeah, big we can that one. That yeah, just <laughs> yeah, that 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 one's understandable. Raging Blast, uh, for the people that don't know, because I don't think I've voiced my opinion on my channel about this too much. I'm a big Raging Blast guy. I actually got it recently on my PC uh, emulated, so. Cause I have it on my PS3, I just don't have that with me. But yeah, I'm big Raging Blast 2 guy. Uh, Raging Blast 2 is better than one might be. But yeah, Raging Blast. I like agree. I was going through the tutorial like literally last night before we uh, recorded this when we were talking about it originally, and I was like, yeah, I like some of these movement options. I never like really fully like learned. I just knew about some of them and didn't use them. But like looking at that and then looking at the Tenkaichi, I can definitely see some of the draw and inspiration for how Tenkaichi influenced it but in my yeah, opinion definitely. raging blast definitely had some things that you know just being a newer game and being on the ps3 it did differently and things that i like but also some things that you know tenkichi i can't admit did better yeah one thing i will say compared to like tenkichi and raging blast as someone again who really likes learning mechanics of games and such i don't really understand the hate for raging blast like other people do like there are people who hate those games but me personally mm -hmm. i don't really hate them per se like the only thing that really Raging Blast did worse than Tenkaichi, in my opinion, is the movement. Because the movement in the Tenkaichi games were like way better. It felt like more fluid, if, or, if it makes sense. Where Raging Blast like was, was very stiff when you first played it. I was but about once to say, you got used to the game, it felt a lot better. Yeah, definitely. But there are some mechanics in Raging Blast 2 as well that are absolutely fucking bonkers. But mm -hmm. again, since like a lot of people played it on like a very like very casual level a lot of people didn't really understand how the games work which is completely fine yeah but, yeah, yeah i was about to say because uh, i was like so i was playing through the tutorial last night and i was there were like moments where it was like you need to back up and i was like okay let me just pull the analog stick back up and it's like no you're doing this slow lean back you know slowly drifting back and it was like well how do i back up faster you gotta press x and you do like a hot back there's like you no know, smooth way of just jetting back unless you like hold x i think to use like some of your meter to do it so mm -hmm. definitely some clunkiness in this uh way that it's played but also it's a really old game by this point so by a lot of standards it's gonna be a lot clunky but mm -hmm. when you compare it to Tenkei to yet, it does move not as fluidly. I, I will agree with that. But uh, also, if you're wondering why uh, I am voicing some of my opinions on this, it's because I was around for like, well, all of us were around for Budokai, uh, at least one of them, one of the three. And we were all obviously around for the uh, Raging Blast games. I played more Raging Blast. I played some of the old Budokai's. I think I played Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and I played it a little bit. Might have like enjoyed it, but never was like a huge fan of it. JD was a bigger fan of it than me and he played both of them obviously, but he was like higher skill level in terms of it. And then Joe was kind of like me in this sense, but he played a lot more Budokai than me. So he had a little bit more knowledge of both of them, whereas I have a lot of knowledge in Racing Blast because I played it a lot more, but I didn't yeah. play both. But also, Joe, you haven't said anything in a while, so you know, you got anything you want to say? Right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just letting everybody, uh, you know, I was I was going to chime in. With, He's being respectful. Say. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 of course, of course. I, I got to let my brethren talk, you know, get their get their opinions out. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, so what I was, what I was going to say is I was actually just follow up on what you just said, like um, how I'm on the casual side of things. Like, I was just one of those kids that, like, grew up um you know i had like three brothers that were in the anime scene so i kind of mm -hmm. grew up on it uh without a choice basically like they forced me to be like this so you know i was always like that little kid just fiending out just trying to play the games uh with my brothers or whatever and i came across a beautiful game and it was dragon ball z Budoka, right now this is the second one so listen so just like uh just like jd said he he's more the um, competitive side or whatever. So he just recently showed me um, a combo of his, right? And he was speaking about mechanics. So I just now recently saw combos that you can do in these games, right? 
so I kind of wanted to touch up on that. So I kind of wanted to like talk about like, because listen, as a kid, like we were playing games and we thought all type of games were good, like uh, World of Warcraft, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> League of Legends. Uh, you know, we all thought games like that were good, but now that we're older, a little bit more uh, mature, a little bit more experienced with games, we understand we can make a game and we can break it. So, so listen, these combos that you could do, right? It's sort of like, how can I, how can I compare this? It's sort of like when you get hit, you're sort of playing Tekken in a way. Like yeah. when you get hit and you're facing someone that's really good and knowing what they're doing with the combos, um, you pretty much lose ASAP. So what I'm kind of hoping for um, in this new game is that we get sort of like a mechanic to break out of this. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know, maybe, oh, yeah. like so, a, um, maybe like a like a guard break or something like that. Oh, no. So something for those like, combos right there, the, uh, um, the combos I showed you for that one, that's just Budokai 1. And Budokai 3 and in Infinite World, you can get out. By yeah. vanishing. Yeah, but I said, don't they, yeah, can't you vanish like mid combo? Yeah. Those games? So in Budokai 1 and 2, because they saw like people were learning how to combo cancel and stuff like that, and Budokai 3 and Infinite World, especially Infinite World, but we'll get to that later, you can vanish out of that. You're not just stuck in it. Yeah, because if you're going yeah, against somebody who really knows what they're doing and they're doing like true block strings and true combos, yeah. it's like, bro, you're just going to be fucking very scary around that point. Yeah, especially when you don't yeah, know how to do it, so you now you're fighting at a massive disadvantage. Mm hmm. Okay. All right, go back, see, go back. Yeah. See. See again. I didn't. I didn't know any of that. Um. So. Right, so really quickly. Uh. So we're just. Yeah. So I'm not really gonna speak too much on that because I'm. I'm really not experienced. Like I said, I was just. You know, one of those kids fiending over Dragon Ball games back in the day. Just wanted to play. Yeah. Not really. Uh. Just sitting down playing with uh friends from school or whatever too. So I didn't really know any combos. We were just playing. So. But now that I think about it. There was a lot of characters um, in the Budokai series that uh, people may call copy and paste characters. Now yeah. listen, we all probably got hyped when we seen this trailer. Um, let's be honest, I was looking around uh, with a couple people uh, that were talking about this on their YouTube videos and a lot of people in the comment section are expecting like a crazy roster and a whole bunch of characters, right? Ooh, now listen, we all, we, all may, we all may love to um, load up the game and see a hundred people uh, on day one release, right? A hundred characters, maybe even two hundred. Some people were even saying three hundred. Oh, no, y'all getting To ambitious. be honest with you, I hate to break it to you, but if you're one of those people that think that we're even going to reach a hundred characters on day one, um, yeah, you're kind of just delusional. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I hate to say it because listen, I would rather have. 20 characters right 20 firm set characters on day one and they all have unique move sets and they all move different i don't want a hundred characters and maybe about 20 of them play the same that's that's copy and paste i don't want that and i'm um, glad you went so into I, that so i don't segment. know how you guys feel about that but well, that's not I'm not with that at all. so that's the biggest thing that um i'm eventually going to make a video about some point too especially for tenkaichi especially um, while I will agree that Tenkaichi does have um, similar move sets to like characters, like some characters will have like the same like volley attacks or something. Each of the characters play like completely different. Like Goku plays different than like, so like um, the way Tenkaichi works, right? There's like different smash properties. Mm -hmm. You have like a up tilt, uh, a down a down triangle tilt, and then you have a left triangle and a right triangle. But the way the game is. Some characters have that and some characters don't. Like in Tenkaichi, for example, the androids, they can't charge, but mm -hmm. every other character can charge. And then if you're playing a character like Garlic Jr., Broly, for example, if you're playing a bigger character, they go slow. And yeah. then some characters, they have a mechanic to where they can't really combo that well compared to like other characters can. Like, um, once I really get into that video, we can go into depth, but I did. I am glad that like Joe's speaking from a casual point because here's the thing, even for games, it's very important to have two sides with like people who know how to play the game and people who are like, you casual. know, just playing, playing the game. It's always good to have that front. Yeah, now cool. with the roster, at the most, I expect 40 to 60 characters. A lot of people need to understand that we are in a different time period. We are no longer in the PS2 era no more to where they can just port the characters over to new games like that. And especially, we're on new hardware now. 
A lot of y'all gotta understand, it's been 15 to 16 years since Tekaichi 3 came out, and now we're on PS5 hardware, and I'm seeing people, even in videos like Joe said, saying they expect to have 100 characters on release, and honestly, I just don't see that. Yeah. Like, the way I see it, they're right. gonna release 40 to 60 characters at most, we're gonna have hella DLCs, and they're gonna go from there. Mm -hmm. Like, basically mm -hmm. just giving That's this game a um, lot, lot more longevity, because one thing yeah. like people will be like is like oh well, raging blast 2 had a a big ass roster because yeah. i don't know how many exactly but you know many. raging blast fucking roster was huge and it had multiple versions and in terms of transformation yeah it I had like it legendary super Vita saiyan too. broly broly was like yeah. super saiyan 3 they had um like some movie characters like obscure ass movie characters like i can't remember his name but the dude in all red with the ability to absorb Didn't they have a in that game uh, what's that um... in that game no, Rudigon was in that game, yes. Oh, let me Raging check Blast. Raging Blast 2, yeah, he yeah, he was in there. Because Damn. in Raging Blast 2 we we also had um uh for the first time Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, right? Yeah, that he was in there too. Okay, yeah, so Rudigon was in there too. Damn. I honestly forgot that he was in there. But like the thing of uh, I, I just can't remember if we had tape on though. Damn, no, I, 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 ooh, I can't Damn, I can't remember now. Did we have tape on? See, I'd have to. Jay Z got the. Oh no, 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 no! Rudigon's not in that game. He's was... not in Rage of Blast too. Yeah, I'm looking at the character uh, roster right now. He's not in there. Yeah, I, I was about to say. I thought I would remember that. So was he in the first one though? Maybe the first one, because I, I didn't play Rage of Blast one. one. But but to no, like, because he he was definitely one. Of but my yeah. bad. Go ahead. No, you good. He might have been the first one. Like I said, I didn't play that one, so I can't speak on the roster. JD can look it up again uh, if you need to. But the thing I was going to yeah, say... Yeah, look that up, because I need to know. Yeah, the thing I was going to say was is that Red Dead Blast 2 is that it's the second version of the game. It's like with the other Tenkaichis from what I've seen. Like, just watching on YouTube, it's like Tenkaichi uh, or Buda, the first Budokai game. Looking at that roster, small as shit, tiny ass roster. And then in the later games, they add more and more because they've now made the, not the exact same game, but they're carrying a lot of stuff over from the previous game and adding new stuff to it. So when it's their very first game on the PS5, the brand new shit that they're probably gonna be adding in this game, brand new like characters and probably how they're gonna fight, maybe a little bit of like um, attention and detail from the previous games, but not like they're carrying over the same shit because it's three console generations different it's like you can't just be expecting 100 plus characters all playing unique all playing differently for their first game on the ps5 and it's the first one since it's coming back because the thing is technically we don't know what budokai this is this could be budokai 10 h1 but like brought into a modern era with new dlc and shit because technically we don't know if this is a budokai 3 succession because we all call it blue right. Four, but it was never called that officially by the team at least not of right now is when this is getting recorded yeah, we don't even know if it's a remaster so yeah that's why i never even call it that yeah. yet yes it, it could literally just be a, re a remastered of just like you said i just call it the new budokai tenkaichi game that's what i call it yeah because like but but also i i do want to say something really quickly uh before you know i forget because you know my memory y'all uh, so listen, so you were, so you were talking about the um, the characters again. So uh, I wanted to say that we can expect a hundred characters, but will it be perfect though? Like, what? Like, wouldn't you rather them give us twenty or or even fifteen characters? Let's because because even uh, Dragon Ball Z fighters, they they did it in a good way. Like, look look at the characters that were released whenever that game came out. Yeah, we, but people even complained we, about that roster too when that game came out. No, yeah, but but look at it though. They say it's one of the one of the greatest Dragon Ball Z games ever made, but that's because they release greater characters in the DLC. That's the that's the time of age that we're in now. You know, we get a game and then we get DLC over the lifespan. Uh, what, what's the what's the um expected lifespan of games nowadays? What five years? Uh, five max five? five from like most games, like because like. Most games ain't getting five Most years worth of content down the line. It, right. it has to be a successful game that they, they really care about. Because like most games, I would say get like maybe two, three minimum, mm -hmm. but like maximum five plus. Because that takes real okay. dedication to that shit. Because it's a lot of work to yeah. make content for that game. You could just scrap it and start a new one. But uh, you're yeah, right. Fighters is one of those exceptions for sure. Um, because that that game has been out for how many years now? Five plus years now. 
yeah and, and it's, it's still one of the the most talked about games and yeah uh, at evo it's, it's doing successful in uh esports and everything so um, oh, yeah oh and that's one so thing at I, the same I, time though but at the same time you gotta look at it from like the perspective of, like the tenkaichi is going to be made for like a casual group of people mm -hmm. and we're going to keep it a bug it's not going to be like a esports game like fighters is like nah. fighters that no, was yeah. like made for like a fighting game where tenkaichi's is like the games where like you hang out with your homies and shit like that yeah, yeah it... i completely don't want it to be made competitive like that because i think that will cause the game to die yeah, so I don't. I won't expect that. Yeah, because sure. it's more like fighters was like, more like your traditional fighting game. Tenkaichi is kind of yeah. like similar to Soul Calibur in a way, but like also not. Also, in like the way of how the previous games were, in the like reputation that's built around it. It's not built as this not, right. uh, fighting game like Soul Calibur or like Tekken. It's like no, this is very much a casual experience. You can you can add some like add some. more fighting game oriented fighting stuff game. in it for like those type of fans because obviously there's a, a market for it now with fighters but like you know generally most yeah, people gen playing this to sit down do like uh videos together with the homies or just play the game casually yeah. but so it also might go back to um Nas's question too i think the things that i want to see the most for this game personally for me um just make sure to have some depth for me for of course because i'm that type of person not not everybody has to be like that again i'm just someone who likes to learn game mechanics yeah but, try to keep it like um, a good middle ground for it what i want to see for this game especially me personally now this one's a huge one i do not want to play the dragon ball z story again i don't want to i, I played that. it for so many oh, years I, now. I really have something to say about it. i was just i really it. don't I rather we just start from Dragon Ball Super, and if they just add Dragon Ball Z characters with it, that's fine. But that's personally me. But that's just because I've been playing Dragon Ball games for so long now. And so real quick, be the first thing. And real quick before you second say it, Joe, it's thing, like um, we also fucking played it through Kakarot. Go ahead, JD. Yeah. Uh, second oh. thing I will put, uh, I would like a world tournament mode again to Ooh. like have your homies have like 16 players and like a world tournament online. Kind of like because back uh, then we didn't really have Tenkaichi online back in the day. You had the find some workarounds for that mm -hmm. whereas now it's gonna be very online oriented i see so like we would love to see that um definitely have some lobbies in there i do not want this to be a naruto storm or a demon slayer situation to where we had to beg for lobbies because a month after the release that. yeah right. like we do not want that and for like the story mode honestly just like i'm not really worried about the story mode because i already know they're going to go crazy with that but i would <laughs> like to see like some what if stories again that's what i really loved about tenkaichi stuff it's like the what if shit. Either the what ifs or like the only movie shit. Cause like they either go all in with movie shit in. or they just disregard it all together. The, act, yeah, the only reason they, they can ask the movie shit in there too. Yeah, the only reason yeah. that I don't think they're gonna do this cause Broly is like oh. the most popular. Broly and Heroes oh. is like the two most popular Dragon Ball movies right now. So they're not gonna just disregard it. But the thing of are they gonna go back to old movie stuff before that is the question. But go ahead, Jay. Oh, who knows? Right. Okay. So, so well, um, so. JD had mentioned about how he knows that they're crazy with the with the story. Um, honestly, I kind of have my own opinion on that, and it's uh, it's kind of tricky because they could go crazy with it, and they could also mess it up. Just like he said, listen, we how many Dragon Ball games do we have? Like how like how many times do we gotta see Frieza hit Vegeta with a death beam? How many times do we gotta? You know, see, uh, Goku go super, super Saiyan. How many times do we gotta fight Cell and Cell Juniors? You know, we're mm -hmm. tired of that. But listen, ooh, ooh, we don't, nephew, we nephew. don't have much. Okay, nephew. What if, if a possibility we get to play as villains? What now? If? Now that, that would be, be fire. That I, would be I, sick. I All right, go ahead, go ahead. That, that would be sick. <laughs> but now, listen. So. I agree with what he said about how we should probably just automatically have the Dragon Ball Z characters. I agree with that. And then he also said that we should just start from Super. Now, here's the problem with starting from Super, right? Because, okay, with Super, we got the Resurrection F arc, and then we got the um, the God of Destruction arc, um, and then we got the, the Tournament of Power, or whatever. Yeah, that would be cool and all. We can go through that, you know, fight Jiren, Topo, Lord Beerus. But, 
Um, that's looking like a real uh, short story mode to me, depending on how they do it and how I'm worried about uh, what type of characters we get because I wanted to talk about, like, I'm excited for this game, but I, it's also too soon to get too excited because there's a lot of characters that I want to play in this game because um, I read the manga. So, uh, spoiler alert, uh, alert, I don't know if Nas would put it up, Big Red, whatever, if you haven't yeah, put the manga. Yeah, there's a lot of people that I want to see from the manga in here, but I mean, dude, I, d I don't know what they're doing over there. I don't know what's going on with the production team, but I mean, we got two new movies, or, or maybe three. We got three new movies, and we still have no word on when Super is coming back for animation. Mm -hmm. So depending on how long that takes and how long it takes for this game to come out how much of super content are we really going to get before they just start pushing out a whole bunch of what ifs now what ifs are cool and all but if i gotta go through the the um, super story that we're already getting in kakarot and then i go straight into what ifs I'm not really going to be that happy, to be honest with you. That's what I don't want. I want to go through some new story, new everything. I want new everything, you know, because Kakarot has the RPG or whatever. I mean, what, uh, the newest DLC they just, uh, what, you get to play as Kid Vegeta? Is it the uh, Bardock. Bardock and stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, and then we got stuff from Super. Are, I mean, are, are we just going to keep recycling stuff here? You know, like, I feel like it's okay to be excited, but I feel like it's too soon to be really excited like i'm kind of going in with uh cautious a little optimism bit of maybe maybe mid expectations because there's a oh, lot that thing. could go wrong because yeah just just uh like jd said um a few minutes ago i forgot to touch up on that we don't know who's working on this and we don't yeah. even know if it's a remastered or if it's just a whole new budokai game in itself so i just feel like it's too soon to be excited and i just feel like there's a lot of stuff that that could go wrong but there's a lot of stuff that could go right